This whole fast and furious ATF shipping in 30,000 guns into Mexico has now come to a head. And the attorney general has been accused by the head of the ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Farms and Explosives, of lying to Congress uh, when he said that he knew nothing about the ATF plan to ship guns into Mexico. Now, uh, it's now been ferreted out that even a year and a half ago, Holder gave speeches basically alluding to what he was doing. And now it's even in the Associated Press and other major publications uh, that the FBI and DEA were involved as well. And yes, it was a Justice Department operation. Who believes the ATF would ship 30,000 guns to uh, major cartels like Los Zetas? if they were not given authorization. And the Attorney General has been caught lying, Eric Holder. This is huge, but I wanna give you the full rest of the story. And as usual, we don't give you the rest of the story after the fact. Now you're ready to hear the information we covered six years ago, five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, and with total precision, and the videos have been reposted on Infowars.com. Two years ago, we laid out everything that would transpire with absolute, complete, and total precision. Not because we're smart, but because we know how the crime syndicate that seized control of our government in 1913 operates. We know every one of the plays in their playbooks. Just like if you got your favorite uh, football team and you watch them every year and you know the coach, you know what is in their playbook once you see uh, the players go into motion. And we're going to lay all of that out today. And I put up uh, a video that I shot on my iPhone 4 up to our uh, YouTube channel with 125 million views. And uh, it's uh, the two parts of it have had more than 70,000 views. That means it'll get about half a million views. That's good. Should get about 10 million views, we wish. But um, Obama caught staging terror attack, part one and two. And I again shot that yesterday from my home. I couldn't even really sleep uh, on, 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 on Saturday, uh, being aware of all this coming to a head because... You have to ask yourselves, why were the guns shipped into Mexico? And that's twofold. And we've written detailed articles breaking it all down with the proof. A, to blame the Second Amendment and say the violence in Mexico was caused by that and to call for assault weapons bans, the shutdown of gun shows, only allowed to sell one gun at a time at gun shops, total tracking, and just like you have a no-fly list with no judge, no jury, don't know why you're on it, the White House now has announced, as of Friday, they want a no-buy list for gun owners that they just magically put you on a list. You could never even had a parking ticket. Obama says you don't get a gun, you don't get it. You may remember two years ago, White House Chief of Staff gave speeches to uh, the Violence Policy Center, the Victim Disarmament Center, and others, and we've played those clips many times. Now they're back calling it sensible restrictions everyone will agree on. And then you actually get into the meat and potatoes uh, of uh, what they're uh, about to start promoting. So that's one of the things they did there. A. B. I, of course, have interviewed LAPD police officers uh, who were there in the 80s watching the government ship in the cocaine. We have the 1997 Solicitor General CIA hearings in Congress where they admitted the CIA was shipping in tons of cocaine and cooking it into crack uh, to destabilize the United States and pack the private prisons that the mega banks laundering the drug money owned. Um, also, I've interviewed people like uh, Pulitzer Prize winner of Dark Alliance, Gary Webb. He was about to come out with more information. I talked to him about a month before he was shot twice in the back of the head. The police in California ruled it was a suicide. And he'd been telling folks that people have been breaking into his house. Uh, I, of course, have interviewed Sela Castillo, one of uh, Gary Webb's main sources, who was the top DE agent in Central South America and Mexico for more than a decade, an army sniper from Vietnam. Before, uh, at, before first he was an army sniper, then he was what, um, Border Patrol, then he was um, DEA. And uh, he came on my show six years ago, again, five, four, three, two, right to two years ago, when the ATF shut him up for a couple shotguns saying they were illegal and put him in jail because he was making the rounds dealing with the ATF. And he was saying at the time, that's why he's in prison, uh, he was saying at the time that, that he'd been approached 
this is as Calderon was about to be elected, and he said Calderon would, would steal the election, as he did. And international groups that watched the election said clearly he stole most of the states in Mexico. He said that, that there would be a huge drug war in Mexico, and that Mexico was going to be collapsed because the CIA in Fort Benning, Georgia, and now that's, been, that, that's now in mainstream news, was funding Los Zetas, giving them automatic weapons, grenade launchers, you name it, and, and that Los Zetas... Uh, that quote was going to defect from the U.S. government, the Mexican government, was really working with the U.S. and Mexican government once Calderon got in was the plan. And that's why as soon as he got elected, all this started to wipe out the other three to four major cartels that would not launder all their money through U.S. and international banks. Now, by the way, that's in Bloomberg and AP. I'm going to go over all these headlines, giving you the basics now. I'm going to walk through all of it. And so I watched all this unfold exactly as he said it would unfold. Uh, Gary Webb was working on that. They went to his house, shotgunned him twice in the back of the head. I want you to know I'm risking my life even giving this information. $500 billion a year in cocaine and heroin come into this country. It's all laundered by the big six banks on record. Private Federal Reserve has been caught repeatedly with hundreds of billions in cash. They're allowed to keep it all. Doesn't matter. You're going, but wait, the cops go to big links to get the, the, the drugs. Drugs were legal till the 30s. You could buy heroin, cocaine, opium, anything you wanted at a corner drugstore. Drug use was much lower, even though Coca-Cola had cocaine in it. I mean, they had it all right down at the corner drugstore. And the prohibition had ended, which the big establishment made illegal so they could make huge profits, corrupt the police. Some cases, 100 times what they were making before alcohol was legal, um, illegal. Knocked out all their competition, then only the insiders could bring in alcohol. Some of the greatest fortunes ever, including the Kennedy fortunes, were made out of that. Kennedy's, of course, Joe Kennedy, head of the Irish Mafia on the East Coast. Chicago delivered the election to him through the dailies, other Irish. But the issue, and this is all mainline history, go pull it up. They made alcohol illegal for a decade to take control of the market. There were hundreds of breweries then, hundreds of whiskey makers then. For decades after Prohibition, there were only a few. Now... When that ended, they had to make narcotics illegal to have something new. The big major international importers make it illegal. They control the major cities, the major distributors. Now that massively rises the price of all of their commodities. Heroin, cocaine, the list goes on and on. They bring it in. They corrupt the police further. They control the criminal networks. They control the muscle. They shut down all of their competition. They take the low-level users and give them long sentences in privately owned banks, uh, privately owned prisons owned by, go look at who owns the big main chains of mega prisons. We have more prisons anywhere else in the world, more drug use anywhere, anywhere else in the world. We're number one. The people then uh, who get caught using the drugs that were shipped in at the top of the chain, who go rob stereos and the rest of it that goes right back to the banks, they then get put in a bank-owned private prison working as slave labor for 25 cents an hour displacing everybody else's jobs i mean you think the illegals drive down wages and so the, the, the globalists are masters at making money on both ends now i'm going to go over the total proof of this when we come back on the other side foreign banks run america and they run the drugs they run everything including the white slaves I grew up in rockwall texas my last few years of high school were here in uh, austin we had to move down here because the police, through a lawyer, uh, called and told my dad that if we didn't move out of town, they were going to arrest me and hang me in the jail cell because I didn't use drugs. I, I did drink some, not a lot, but, you know, at parties and uh, chew tobacco and things like that because I was more of a jock. But I saw the police at parties over the years. I, I saw police deliver drugs. And I talked about it when they would be at the school with their drug dogs. I'd say, hey, you're a drug dealer. What are you doing here searching people? And they would take me in the office and slam my head into the desk and tell me that they were going to send me to prison where I'd be raped and given AIDS. I mean, all this happened. So I've always known this. And then later the sheriff of Rockwall, uh, what was it uh, Jack or John McWhorter? You can look it up. Went to even Rolling Stone wrote about this. They didn't really believe me at first. And then they went and looked it up, and or, or was it New York Magazine? I forget which one. Yeah, they went and looked it up and did indeed find all that happen. So now I know why they were threatening to, to kill me. That, but that wasn't the sheriff's department. That was a police department doing that. 
And, and so, see, I've lived, I've, I've seen things early on. And, and, and I guess the other young people thought it was normal to have the cops dealing the drugs and then also putting people in jail for using them. See, I didn't think that was normal. I had common sense or logic, and I didn't like it. I didn't like driving out of the school parking lot and the cops went to search my car and looking at them and going, you care about my six-pack of beer? I actually did, did this once. Yeah, I got a six-pack of beer in here I hadn't had in a week. It's underneath the seat. You, you're going to search and take me to jail for that, you drug dealer? You see, I live in the real world, ladies and gentlemen, not in some fantasy land. And it's going to be reality, not fantasy, that's going to save this republic. Now, on record, if you go research the big mega prison companies, they are wholly owned subsidiaries of the big mega banks that are on record shipping in narcotics. Let me just give you some proof of that. Uh, since I raised it. Oh, here's one. U.S. government openly admits arming Mexican drug gangs with 30,000 firearms. Los Zetas Kingpin, we bought guns directly from U.S. government. Uh, here's another one. A holder lied. DOJ news release shows Obama administration approved ATF Mexico weapons smuggling. They were so dumb, they put it out as a press release a year and a half ago. <laughs> Lying to Congress. Uh, Congressman says, unlikely, Holder did not know about Operation Fast and Furious. Uh, yeah, now it's come out in the Associated Press that FBI and DEA were involved in the, quote, Justice Department operation. Continuing, at least 40 killed in Mexico in 24-hour period. Houston Chronicle. Oh, here it is, Bloomberg. Banks financing uh, Mexico gangs admitted in Wells Fargo deal. And, and it's admitted that in a two-year period, Wells Fargo and its owner, uh, Wachovia and its owner, Wells Fargo, laundered $376 billion and leased and ran the aircraft. Well, we already knew that. Oh, Reuters back in 2007. Um, and you can pull up the headline. CIA torture jet wrecks with four tons of cocaine. It was pure cocaine coming directly from the source. National security is a great way to operate. And see, when some other group, the Colombians, don't pay their cut. I remember in 1999, Richard Grasso, the head of the New York Stock Exchange at the time, in Reuters, again, Reuters, went and met with the head of the FARC guerrillas in Colombia and, quote, encouraged him to invest his money. And it said a little-known loophole allows this. Oh, yeah, just like the big banks write the loopholes where they pay uh, zero tax. Google pays 2.4. Uh, General Electric, zero. They write all the laws. They tax you, then pay the money themselves. Continuing. And he told the head of the FARC, you invest with us or we're going to invade. He said, no. U.S. military invaded. Go look it up. Wasn't called a war, called drug interdiction. And they have GPS airplanes spraying the coca fields that aren't owned and run by their drug dealers. And then, of course, they bombed uh, with some uh, Hellfire missiles and killed the he head of the FARC. And they said, we taught you, boy. You invest with us or you die. And the American people are so gullible and so naive that it's just all admitted out in the open. Because even of the children, that's how we're seen as cattle-like children, were to read that. We don't know what we're reading. We don't understand it. Ha, 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 ha. It's so funny. Now, continuing here. Eric Holder should go directly to prison. He should be indicted for lying under oath to Congress. It's a felony. Uh, the head of the ATF got caught lying when the emails came out. They were running the whole operation. He was going to get burned. So he's saying, look, I was under the orders of Eric Holder. Now the FBI, it's admitted, is involved. DEA, of course they are. My DEA source told us this six years ago. They sent in Los Zetas on record. They said, oh, thousands of Los Zetas, Mexican commandos, were trained at Fort Benning, Georgia. And then in mass, the weak Calderon was elected. We told you about this six months before. The, the week after he was elected, they defect in mass and start their own cartel on the Texas border with the U.S. government arming them. Now confirmed. We told you this six years ago. Told you it was coming six years ago. Happened five years ago. The videos are all posted on Infowars.com and on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. We've reposted uh, those. Well, they've never been removed. You, you see the timestamp date, and there they are. Interviewing Sully Costello in, in studio and others. Just told you everything that was happening. So the Pentagon trains these brigades of Mexican troops. They defect, 
And now the Mexican government's gotten second thoughts and is starting to arrest some of them because it turns out the, the people that run our government, I don't want to say U.S. government, the criminal banks that run our country through the military industrial complex started having Los Zetas kill even Mexican officials that were supposedly part of the deal. So there's a double cross there. The bankers always double cross. So it's now in the news in major Mexican newspapers and in U.S. papers, and we've got it all boiled down. Larry Pratt, Gunners of America, sent us uh, uh, all their intel on Friday. We put it in the article. Los Zetas Kingpin, we bought guns directly from U.S. government. And I have the Gun Owners of America analysis that they sent to us to publish. It's all right there. You want to go read a six-page report with everything detailed, Reuters, AP, all hidden in plain view. Go read it. Go read it. Go read it. Go read it. It's right there for everybody. Now, um, I want to go over more of this, but we're going to break here. How long do we go to break? A minute or two? A minute and a half. Let's go ahead first and play an ABC News clip. Let's play an ABC News clip from a year and a half ago where they spin the fact that our troops are helping grow the opium in Afghanistan. Uh, here it is. Uh, computers are hiccuping. Here it is. So here's the question. Why are American troops now helping Afghan farmers grow that opium? Nick Schifrin reports from Afghanistan on a controversial new policy. Policy. In western Kandahar, poppy farmers score, till, harvest their crop, and the Americans do nothing to stop them. <laughs> they grow it. U.S. soldiers greet farmers. Can you show me which poppy field is yours? They commiserate with farmers having a bad harvest. Tell them I'm very sorry for his field here, and uh, hopefully it's a better harvest next year. And in one case, they even paid a farmer $1,000 after U.S. and Afghan special forces burned his crop. If you can come down to the base on my next visit, I will, I'll make a payment. All right, stay there. This is controversial. Stay there. We're going to come back. This is all a whitewash. I'm going to break down the facts for you in one moment. We're in Afghanistan for the 500 bill in schmack coming to your daughter's veins. And if they catch her using it, they'll put her in a private banker owned prison. Got into the meat and potatoes news yet. But if you studied history, you'd know that the Roosevelt family, the Forbes family, the Rockefeller family, Rockefeller started out um, the, the, the dad of the supposed big founder, John D. Rockefeller, was a snake oil salesman who sold laudanum in the backs of, of uh, buggies. You know, the guys that get up and say, this will cure all your ails, grow your hair back, fix a broken leg. He was the first guy to launch fleets of those under a company name. So the issue is, the drug dealers just made the stuff illegal in the 30s to then jack up prices. And you, I mean, it goes back 300 years ago to the British couldn't get into China. And so the Chinese wouldn't allow them to sell Indian opium into the country. They only allowed the British to come into one port. It took them over 100 years to corrupt the police and take over most of the major cities by bringing in the illegal drugs. And they learned that by the government keeping it illegal, that allowed them to make even bigger profits and take over the criminal networks. And they had two wars uh, in the 1900s or 1800s, 1840s, 1860s, called the Opium Wars or the Boxer Rebellion. This is mainline, mainline history. And the very same interest, the British East India Company that had a, a, a near world monopoly on it, uh, the French had a little bit of... Uh, of their own operation, but nothing compared to it. That's why the French were in control of Vietnam. That's where they got their opium. Uh, the uh, British got theirs out of Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India. That's why the British were the last major colonial power before the Russians to be thrown out of Afghanistan uh, and Pakistan. And they would ship it in to China. And so now they've just made it illegal here because they learned how much bigger their profits were when something was illegal. The Chinese did them a favor. By making it illegal, that was how they got in there, made huge profits for decade after decade, and slowly took over town by town as they got people addicted. Now, continuing here, remember, you got $500 billion a year in opium coming out of Afghanistan alone. Total drugs coming into the U.S., heroin, cocaine, and marijuana, $500 billion, the Justice Department estimates. $500 billion street value. 
That's how you can have Wachovia and Wells Fargo on record in a two-year period, $376 billion running the aircraft, everything. What happened when they finally got caught because whistleblowers kept going, coming forward? A $100 million fine. That's 0.3%. <laughs> And, I, and I've likened it to robbing a bank and you come out with a million bucks and the cops say, give me $3,000 and you can go free. I, I mean, this, this isn't a slap on the wrist. This, this, is, this is nothing. And, and the other big banks have all been caught over the years. Stop being naive. Stop being stupid. Decriminalize all of it now. Take the profit out of it now. But, but side issue. The point here is the attorney general's been caught lying, and it turns out they're so dumb, they even put a press release out admitting they knew about this program a year and a half ago. That's now in the news. Well, I had remembered this. I had told listeners last week, other news agencies, I said, go do the research. I remember covering it a year and a half ago when the attorney general came to Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, and Nevada, and gave speeches calling to shut down gun shows, shut down gun shops, ban semi-autos because of the crime wave in Mexico and blaming it on the Second Amendment when they have a total gun ban in Mexico. When you have that, the people can't defend themselves, only the criminals can operate. Now these Los Zetas people, when they get caught, another got caught in Chicago a few months ago, Chicago Tribune, another top Los Zetas guy, and he came out with documents at federal court saying, I work for the U.S. government, release me. It isn't the U.S. government. It's, it's the criminals working inside the national security state. And now they're coming after your guns. They're, they're shifting the drug war to the gun war against our Second Amendment. So we can live like the poor slaves in Mexico who don't have a right to defend themselves and only the criminals have the guns. There's been over 30,000 dead in the last two and a half years in Mexico. That's more than died each year in Vietnam. Over a decade in Vietnam, we lost 58,000. In just a couple years, 30 plus thousand and growing. And now it came out this week in the news, uh, what in the Phoenix paper and others, that cops have been killed with these 30,000 guns. The cops are stopping cars with these guns in them, with criminal drug dealers driving them. Of course. Oh, 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 I forgot to print this off. Uh, guys, can you search it? It was in a bunch of uh, New Mexico papers, but didn't make it nationally. U.S. attorneys... To, uh, to drop prosecution of officials running guns. Mayors of major cities in New Mexico, what was one of them, Columbus? Uh, uh, police chiefs running guns. And they've declared national security and the U.S. attorneys in West Texas and New Mexico, it's a whole bunch of towns involved, are having to drop the prosecution. They cannot prosecute them because they went ahead and said, do you understand I'm running an operation for the U.S. government? I mean, these people get away with blood. Folks, don't believe me. Just look all this stuff up. Look it up for yourself. Somebody's got to call shenanigans on this. Somebody, because here's the deal. They're getting more and more bold. They're getting more and more crazy. Okay, let's finish those video clips. Uh, now, now, first ABC whitewashes that, oh, since they damaged their crop, they paid for it. Then they cut into the fact that they're actually helping them grow it. Again, they're just going public with something that's always happened. But so many troops were coming home. Well, some tried to. The NFL star wrote letters home about the OPM when it wasn't known. We knew. And, of course, he got killed. It's now come out, executed. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and play this clip from ABC News. Here it is. Here, uh, the Taliban lend the farmers the money. They are indebted to the Taliban. They have to grow the opium. Now the Marines, in their success, are in a sense a victim of their success because now the population is, uh, you know, they have these opium fields, and we are tolerating it. We are tolerating the cultivation of the opium because we know that if we were to destroy it now, the population would turn against the Marines, and it would be a real security risk. Let me introduce Lieutenant Colonel Brian Christmas. He's the commanding. Officer of the third this is Fox. Of Marines. Uh, really a, a wonderful group of uh, Marines here. Uh, I know that you care deeply about this uh, this contradiction, the fact that uh, here you have one of the best fighting forces in the world ever mounted, uh, and in a sense, uh, you're watching as uh, this opium is being grown. I know it, it grinds at your gut. Uh, how do you deal with it? What are you doing about it? Well, uh, frankly, this is a part of their culture. So uh, while it might grind in my gut, it, it's what they do. 
Uh, we, we provide them security, we're providing them resources, and we're providing them alternatives. And the alternatives uh, are different crops to grow. They're getting the seed and the fertilizer. All right, let's stop right uh, there. They can, they I got a bunch of these clips. That's Fox News Geraldo. Uh, and we're going to go back to the ABC here in a moment. We're done with Fox now. You can watch the full clip on YouTube. Uh, you just type in... Um, U.S. soldiers grow opium, heroin, poppy in Afghanistan, and it'll pull up for you. I also have it up on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. Uh, link there. Now, now this one is U.S. military helps terrorists grow heroin, U.S. funding Taliban. Now, let's stop right there before I go any further. The British invaded Afghanistan hundreds of years ago to control this stuff because the Russian czars and others were getting a hold of it and breaking their global monopoly. People wonder how the British, this little bitty island, could take over. A lot of it was they were selling uh, opium worldwide and had addicts working for them and, 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 and ready to do whatever they were told. But, but here's the idea. They provide security. They go on. They provide fertilizer. They help them ship it out and, quote, then interdict it once it gets here. Ladies and gentlemen, CIA aircraft and others are constantly crashing. There's been Esquire articles a decade ago where cops in Miami bust a plane full of heroin, planes full of cocaine in Houston. State police busted an 18-wheeler full of cocaine years ago. It was in the Associated Press on the Texas border. National security was de uh, uh, declared, and the cocaine was uh, let go. Uh, I know Texas State Police listing remember that. This is ongoing. Only the low-level dealers get busted or cowboys that haven't paid their cut. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to finish uh, this other ABC News clip. But but see, this is how dumb they think you are. The troops are all standing around guarding opium poppies, so they get upset, and the spin is, well, if we don't do this, the Taliban and Al-Qaeda will get it. Well, here's the deal. Opium production went from 10% of world supply out of Afghanistan in 2001 to 90 plus percent. It's admitted Congress has had hearings that in Vietnam, massive tonnage of heroin was shipped into the United States. It's on record. Same thing in the 1980s with cocaine with Iran-Contra. That's admitted in Congress, 1997 hearings. And it's admitted what's happening in Mexico. This is a war over who controls the drugs. You know, I was in, uh, well, I consulted on a film that aired on Showtime called American Drug War, and we interviewed drug dealers for it, mid-level you know, drug dealers in L.A. who said, absolutely not. I don't want drugs legalized. Use your head. Do you think the mafia wanted prohibition of alcohol to end? Use your head, folks. This is something somebody with an IQ of like 60 should be able to figure out. By the way, you're, you're mentally retarded if you have an IQ of 70. I mean, I'm serious. This is something that, that, that people who have serious cognitive problems should be able to understand. But uh, the smartest people out there are having trouble because of cognitive dissonance. You don't want to admit it. Really, AP, Bloomberg, others reported a year ago that there were secret deals signed 11 years ago by the biggest insurance companies in the U.S. in meetings with the Veterans uh, Affairs Office to steal all the death benefits of World War II veterans through modern veterans. That when you die in a car wreck or cancer or in combat and you've been putting money out of your check into that uh, life insurance, they just take it. This is a, cr I guess that's patriotic too though, right? This is a criminal enterprise that's taken over and they're not going to stop. They're coming in with carbon taxes. They're shutting down the coal-fired plants that aren't owned by insiders like General Electric on record who's been given waivers. McDonald's is given waivers, not having to buy insurance, but their competitor Burger King does. Again, this is just an example of mafia government that we live under and we must stop being naive. I'm risking my life, my name, everything to just take a bunch of mainstream news and put it in your face. I mean, can you believe they've had all these newscasts? I've even got a NATO press release, video press release. If you just type uh, NATO uh, growing poppies in Afghanistan, you'll get it. And they say, yes, we help grow it. We help them ship it out. This is how we win hearts and minds. Bull! The real Taliban, not the fake al Qaeda Taliban, had taken Afghanistan from the biggest opium producer in the world by 2001 to one of the lowest producers in the world. Because the real, quote, religious Taliban, not the old CIA Taliban from the 80s, and that was a rogue group, was on record destroying it all. On record destroying it all. They had to be liberated. Now, depending on what Justice Department or NATO number or 
um, what's the European group, uh, Interpol number, between 91 and 93 percent of all heroin produced in the world is produced in Afghanistan from less than 10 percent. Right at around, depending on what statistic, around 10 percent or less than a decade ago to number one at 90 plus percent today. And the troops guard it. The troops guard it. The troops guard it and provide fertilizer, everything. Just like they trained Los Zetas at Fort Benning, Georgia, School of Americas. Openly, we had intel they were going to shift and defect. Shelley was invited as a former sniper, former DEA that's in the news today. DEA was down there training them as, as well as FBI. Not just ATF. You see, when the ATF director was about to go to prison for this, he went ahead and blew the whole whistle, and now it's confirmed. FBI, uh, DEA, ATF, all under Eric Holder's orders. All confirmed. Go to InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. I got links to all the mainstream news admitting it, but it's all buried in the headline. It's all buried down in the article. Think about this. This is a staged terror attack. 30,000 guns and the bedlam and the uh, 30,000 dead down there. That this has contributed to the cops confirmed border patrol and a phoenix cop that have been killed with, with with guns traced back that they were then going to use and now we learn they didn't just let them out of the gun shops and order the shops to do it they helped get them across the border using police chiefs to do it with los setas trained in america all confirmed it's so incredible let's finish up with this abc uh, clip where they try to whitewash the whole thing. Here it is. And in one case, they even paid a farmer a thousand dollars after U.S. and Afghan special forces burned his crop. If you can come down to the base on my next visit, I will. I'll make a payment. This is controversial. The opium trade is the Taliban's main source of funding. Around here, this poppy isn't only a plant. It's the very basis of the economy here. Poppy grows everywhere in this area, and most of the farmers base their entire income for the entire season on this harvest. And that's why soldiers ignore and encourage the farmers. If the U.S. burned their crop, farmers would blame the U.S. for their poverty and turn toward the Taliban. I'm not going to lie to you, this farmer says. If my poppy were destroyed, I would be very angry. If we secure them having a good harvest, now they're going to get paid for all their hard work, and then we can deal with the trapping afterwards. Oh, yeah. And that is the new U.S. policy. <laughs> After farmers get paid, try to capture drug traffickers. These troops have confiscated 10,000 pounds of opium before the profit reached the Taliban. Uh, let's stop right One there. Day the U.S. hopes to... Okay, folks, so this is how they spin it. Now, the troops aren't the main ones on the C-130 shipping and out. That's the contractors. And contractor aircraft have crashed in Europe. They've crashed the Middle East and Mexico and the U.S. full of heroin and cocaine. And I read you one of the Reuters uh, headlines on that earlier. You need to grow up and understand this. You need to understand the big banks are allowed to launder the money and even pay for the aircraft and lease them and run them in their names. On record, I read to you Bloomberg headline. In the hundreds of billions, 376 bill. Stop being naive. And, and if you're a young person, never use the government's products. It came out five years ago in the New Freedom Initiative. But the federal government wants to try to drug half of school children with Prozac or Ritalin type drugs, which molecules are even more dangerous than the illegal molecules. Don't ever take their Ritalin or their Prozac. Don't ever take cocaine. Don't ever take heroin. Don't ever take any of it. It is a direct tax to the mega banks that are openly imploding our society. Now, I want to shift gears now, ladies and gentlemen, and don't hold your breath for Eric Holder to get in trouble. Don't hold your breath because this is official banker policy that runs this country. This is the private banking cartel mafia system. Don't hold your breath for drugs to ever be decriminalized because they don't want their prices to go down. We have the biggest prison population. The drug war started in the 80s. We have triple the heroin, double the cocaine, according to the Justice Department's own numbers we had then. It's working well. The drug war is a big success. We got more people in prison. We've got the, the prisons as colleges for crime. Uh, we've got a militarized police busting down doors in, in, in no-knock warrants, looking for drugs shipped in by the shadow government.